Okay, here's what I would have done. Bro, no one cares what you would have done. Actually, everyone cares. Welcome to Let Me Book the Territory, the podcast made for smart marks and nostalgia nerds. Brought to you by the Embrace the Turn Up Podcast Network. And now your hosts, A-Dub. E-B-A. E-Ray and J-Mo. Let's, let's, let's get rocking and rolling here. Are we all recording? One, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys just missed the greatest just flame session on the AEW show <laughs> because we're not putting that on pod this week. This is Let Me Book the Territory, the greatest wrestling podcast of all time. I'm your host, the not so humble one himself, the pod god, the pod tribal chief, if you will. I am a dub. Joining me as always is the homie Quantum Leaping from WrestleMania to WrestleMania to SummerSlam to Wrestle Kingdom all the way here. I'm talking about Black IRS himself, BAP history, BA's in the building. BA, what up? Hey, duh, my brother, tribal, bot, tribal pod chief, we the ones. How you doing, my brother? I'm good. BA is in the building, Black IRS, all that fun stuff. I uh, had to take last week off. Um... E-Ray and uh, Dub said I got into some uh, Kanye-like trouble <laughs> um, <laughs> concerning a country in Africa that shall remain nameless. Uh, so we're going to just right. we gonna brush under that. Right. But yeah, BA's done quantum nope. leaping. No, we, we, no, we, can't, look, look, we can't brush up under it, BA. What you no. mean? What you mean? Kanye got no, to apologize and everybody, because, no? No forgiving? No. Because, Na- because Namor came out from Atlantis and kidnapped E-Ray and the Wakanda <laughs> said they will not help us get him back until you apologize to the entire nation of Wakanda. That they didn't say like so when just the say movie Wakanda forever next? one time. Yeah, the Wakanda 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 forever all got day. Him, man. Throw it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, Black Panther, you heard that. Please go get our man's E Ray so he can join us next week. Yes. I don't, I don't know how good he can swim, so I don't know if he should be underwater that long. At least before Wakanda but forever come being, out. <laughs> but that being said, taking his place from the Inaudiverse, we just got this multiverse of pod craziness. The homie Free is in the building, making his Let Me Book the Territory debut. Free, what is pop? Yo, 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 what's good, man? I've been waiting for this moment. The forbidden door is finally open, and your boy <laughs> Free is here. Woo. A.K.A. Yes, Booker sir. Free. A.K.A. Booker Luke Warm Steve Austin. Ooh. A.K.A. Ooh. Steiner Math Tutor. Let's go. Oh, shit. I love, these. I love the AKAs. Free coming in. I like that one. That's that like IR that. in him. I love I like it. That. I love it. Uh. <laughs> That's what's All up. right, fellas. So we we gonna hop right into it because it's late and old man A Dub got to get to bed to get to work in the morning. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna start with we gonna start with BA's favorite topic in the world. Free. We are right. gonna talk about Bray Wyatt and this White Rabbit, and we are gonna talk about Uncle Howdy. <laughs> All right, I just I want to get to your opinions right now. Who do you guys think Uncle Howdy is, and how is this gonna work? into the Bray Wyatt character. B.A., I know you're going to think on it a little bit, so I'm going to start with our illustrious guest, Free. Let, let me hear what you're thinking, bro. I mean, I really think, it's to me, it was kind of obvious. I think it's Bray Wyatt. Oh, I, shit. I know the, 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 the internet chatter is trying to say that it's Bo Dallas from, like, they saw a hearing or whatever, but I'm like, unless they dubbed Bray's voice over Uncle Howdy, it sounds literally just like him. I think if you can kind of look through the mask, it kind of looks like him. It's 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 to me it's got to be Bray Wyatt, and it just goes to show that you know even though I'm a personally a, a huge fan of Bray Wyatt, been a huge fan since he first came to to WWE. Right. Uh, I didn't really see him in NXT, but I, when he first came to WWE with the Wyatt family. But the one criticism that people have that I can't really defend him against is that 
everything involved in him always ends up going like just like downgrading to nonsense after a while. And we're starting pretty soon with this. <laughs> I'm still worried, waiting to see where it goes, but I am like, okay, this is it's a little ridiculous already. Start off right with the nonsense. <laughs> okay. Understood. So I I do think it's Bo Dallas, and I do think they're dubbing Bray's voice over okay. just to give the character like an extra effect. Like so uh, that being said, I don't think you'll ever see Bo Dallas' Uncle Howdy ever cut any promos in the ring. I think everything he'll cut will be like it backstage and stuff and but i do think it's an interesting thing because bringing bray wyatt back like it was it was this huge thing when he came out there that pop was unreal yeah. and you could justify putting him right in the title picture but you're like but then you're like ah but you can't job him out to roman because part of the problem with bray originally was that he was such a power orator powerful orator if you will but he kept losing so his words lost yep. meaning this time around He's, I mean, he's still great on the microphone, but like he's, he's trying to be himself because he feels like, you know, he was lost at a time when he wasn't on WWE television, but also he is kind of this evil guy. So he, I think this is going to like be him coming to terms with his demons. What worries me about it is like after uncle howdy, if it is Bo Dallas or somebody else, then what, Mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you feeling me on this one? I mean, I, I know you're the biggest White Rabbit fan here. I, I hope y'all hear the heavy breathing of just me having to entertain Dubs, like entertainment over this whole Bray Wyatt thing. Like I've said in the past, I'm a, I'm a narrative I, builder. I'm right. A narrative builder. I don't mind this stuff. I entertain it, but like I'm, I'm, I'm it'll be, it's, it's just over nine years of being married. I don't got time for this, man. And my real, <laughs> I, I'm, I get to it. Who is this man? Where is this storyline going? That's all I really care about. But, I, but for the sake of our listeners, who am I think it is? Honestly, I'm, I'm it's either going to be Bo Dallas. Or, 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 I saw some interesting juice on Twitter. Malachi Black, um, the eye thing, the the white eye is what, like, people are trying to kind of say, like, that could be Malachi. But what kind of so makes I, me... I thought that, too. What kind of m- makes me think it's not him is just kind of the point. Like, now that Free brought it up, like, that probably is Bray Wyatt dressed up like that. Maybe it probably won't be him once they start introducing uncle howdy at live events they'll probably let bo dallas be that character but i think right now it's him talking to himself but it'll be somebody else once it's actually unveiled god knows when that happens royal rumble wrestlemania i don't know how this <laughs> is going how long this is going to go but well brace yeah. brace gonna be at crown jewel I, I can't imagine them flying him over there giving him a million dollars to cut something backstage that would be weird. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if he was going to do another backstage promo, maybe if, if, there. if Vince you know was I mean? here still, I would I would be devil's advocate and say we've seen weird stuff. But to your point, I don't think Trips is is going to do that. I don't think so. So I think you're right with that. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of hoping we get the Uncle Howdy reveal at Crown Jewel on Saturday afternoon wrestling. Everybody <laughs> can't wait. The Saudi Blood oh, Money man. Special. Yep. Saudi Blood Money Twelve. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now and yes. now they got to be on alert for terrorist attacks because Saudi was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, bro. Yeah, like. So that, that's how it, that's how I know that check has to be at least a mil. Oh, because I'm like, uh, and you want me to go where? Most of the After dudes. What? Most of the dudes on that card. <sighs> it's a couple, like at least two point five type of deal. Like I don't see Brock Lesnar showing up for a million dollars. Exactly. <laughs> You got it. Brock's like, I need at least to go to three Saudi Arabia. Troubles. He don't even like leaving his house. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> he got this man on the play for like 20 hours. Like, no, no, y'all paying. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> and, you, and you know Brock on the corporate jet, too. He didn't. They probably chartered a jet for the rest of the talent, but Brock's on the corporate jet sitting right next to Trip. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All the CE whatevers in the um, yeah. organization, the, for sure. The CEOs, the COOs. CFOs. And then it's Brock. And, then it's Brock and then it's Roman. Yep. 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 And yep. the honorary Oos, of course, because Oh man. The honorary Oos is the greatest thing on television right now. Yes, I have to agree. Like, have to agree with that. Can can we talk about that real quick? Oh Just yeah. The next layer of that story about Sammy using the word Oosie and this breaking character out of everybody. 
Was that not the greatest thing you guys have ever seen? It was hilarious. Uh, and it's, it seems like such a stupid word there. Like, how do you get that effect out of people? But <laughs> it, it just broke them. It broke them. And then when they broke, I broke. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like watching a skit on SNL and like waiting for like them to like start cracking up at the stuff they're doing when it's actually good stuff happening on SNL. That's yeah. another discussion in the show. But uh <laughs> different show, different right. show. Right. Whole different, different show. show, different podcast. But um Sammy he added a whole nother dimension to the bloodline I didn't think was possible. Um to make these dudes like the whole breaking character thing is like kind of making them even cooler. If that was impossible as far as in the eyes of the wrestling universe and how they position the bloodline and stuff. Cause not only will they not just whoop your ass. Now we're funny, and we got this dude that's funny, but he'll also throw hands too, and Sammy. Um, so yeah, as in, I'm more curious on when is the blow up between Jay and Sammy come? That's that's what we all here for. It's coming. I I feel like at this point you could drag this through mania. You you really? easily could. Like you. And yeah. then the other question is like, what's going to be the turn? Is it going to be Survivor Series? Something has to happen before it ends. I mean, especially in dude, an environment dude, like war dude. games, because you could say the pressure's on and someone's going to crack. That exactly. that's good booking right there. Correct. I mean, yeah, we're we're three weeks away from Survivor Series, so I get. I don't know. Is is, is I think. I think you kick him out after Rumble, and then I think you you get like Sammy and Solo or Sammy and Jay at Mania. Because to not have the Usos defend those tag titles at Mania is insane. But on the same token, this this Jay Uso Sami Zayn thing is just so great. It's so great. I wouldn't mind him having like a Jay Uso versus Sami Zayn match at like I don't know Elimination Chamber or whatever the pay per view is before um, before Mania, like after the Rumble. Could I but propose something kind of crazy? Go ahead Let's and book the you, Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Would you, would you be able to buy into, because Sammy is so over right now, would you be able to buy into him, like, kind of being like a Seth Rollins of the bloodline and, like, destroying it from within to the point that he gets the bloodline over as faces? Could you guys see that happening? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, to your point, Freed, if that's what's going to happen, like the it. nucleus is being built of that theory right now with everybody breaking character and kind of like this ha-ha, kiki, ha-ha shit that's going on with them. That's the nu- nucleus for your theory. So, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be here for it, man. That's, that's something different, exciting. I, I, I like it as an idea. Because the crowd wants um, to cheer them, especially Roman. They yes. want to cheer. They're already cheering Roman. Yeah. They, they want Correct. them yeah. to be faces. Like... But the thing is, like to do that, you have to commit to Sammy as your main as your mania main eventer. That's because for him to break up the bloodline, like Roman's not gonna, you know, stand by that and he's gonna handle it. So you have at that point you have to commit to Sammy as your main eventer. But so And maybe that goes to be point of doing this sooner rather than later. Because maybe it doesn't have to be mania, maybe you blow it off at say the rumble. And then you can okay. start to build into Mania, and then maybe that's where Dwayne comes in if he's going to come. Mm. Dwayne has to show up. He has to give us this one last one. He has to. Duh, we've been we've been asking for Dwayne since this podcast became a thing last year. Like, I mean, I don't know, it's bro. not as bad as it's not as bad as Survivor Series last year where they dedicated the whole show to the Rock <laughs> and he didn't show up. Right, that damn egg stuff. I, that was so cringe. Yeah, that was an epic fail. But I mean, I like that idea. Like, but this thing is just so over. I think I would get as much life out of it as I possibly could. And I don't. I feel like you could drag it out to at least a rumble before you got it. For before Jay's like damn near about to go insane, and he's talking to himself like Bray Wyatt. Like, no man, I you gotta go. He in the back just talking to Uncle Howdy damn there. <laughs> Can we? <laughs> like, we got to get this guy up out Can of here. Can we talk about another underrated part of their whole, you know, thing right now is when <laughs> Sammy was talking about going to Waffle House and Jay perked <laughs> up like it was the... <laughs> <laughs> 
Listen, yes. listen, I've been there. Uh, you about to get into a fight at the club and like you pissed off because your boy didn't start or some shit. And like, come on, we, we just gonna go to the Waffle House. And you just, you forget everything. Right. You, and, uh, and my Cali uh, people, my Cali listeners, this is what we are missing out on. Because you know, I've been to the South, I've been to, I've been to my, my fair share of Waffle Houses and it's an amazing place. I haven't had the yeah. late night uh, uh, um, uh, Waffle House experience, but just going is like, this place is special. Oh man! Oh, like, yeah. There's something special about like Midwest and Southern diner food. Yes, like Waffle House in particular. Like, it's so good and so satisfying. Like, I wouldn't like I wouldn't like recommend it to you. Like, if you say, "Hey, where's a good place to eat?" I wouldn't say Waffle House. <laughs> nah, unless you have, but, unless you have in the bag. Nah, not at all. <laughs> yeah, but I would, but I would sell you somebody. Like, you won't leave out of any restaurant that I would recommend to you more satisfied than you will leave it out of a Waffle House. Because of what you spent, how much you got, how good the food was for the desolate conditions it was cooked in, you'd be like, damn, they made some miracles happen back here. <laughs> the desolate yes. conditions the food was cooked in. I'm sure people are running to the Midwest right now to go to Waffle House. <laughs> B.A., you ever been in a clean Waffle House? No, never. Every time I, I say, go, I was gonna say, yeah. the menu is probably the dirtiest thing on the table when I sit down. But like, that tells me I'm my, Why is it sticking to my hand? <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> a, a clean like, Waffle House <laughs> is like a Popeye's with, like, nice employees. <laughs> you know the food is going to be trash. Oh, yeah. You're like, what is this? Absolutely. Why are y'all so nice in here? Oh, it's spicy about to be trash. Yep. Spicy going to be mild as fuck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be mid yes very mid yes yes yes. you know what else was mid guys the t- the decision to take those tag titles off of damage control so to weird. put them on another thrown together tag team i i didn't understand it i went to sleep monday night thinking there's no way they pull these belts off of damage control woke up in the morning to ba text messages pissed off i'm like what the fuck happened <laughs> i like on, I was man. like, did Vince, was that on his like last will and testament of being chairman? Like, <laughs> you got to take the belts off established team and put it on a random team. That's such good shit. I don't, I don't like, I don't like teams with names. <laughs> right. I don't That's like such good <laughs> shit. Do this his for me one more time, testament. H. Do it for right. me, H. <laughs> like, I, and I, we all believe that they're going to get those belts back at Crown Jewel, right? You would I imagine. Hope so. I hope or so. It's, so like, so it's a bridge What's to a, a it's a bridge to a better thing than damage control maybe i don't think the only bridge that would make people kind of put this away would be naomi and sasha and y'all see on social media they not thinking about coming back right now they doing entirely too much best lie right i've heard so. rumors that becky might be in saudi this weekend i'm not really buying it but that i've, I've heard that rumor i mean she i mean seth is her man she could just be rolling with seth that's true. No, that's definitely true. Well, mm-hmm. they they do need one more person apiece if we think that this is going to be the women's war games match. Mm, duh, that's those, that's those that's, matches are always four on four. That's what it is. Yes, they got to make that match. Like you said, Survivor Series is three weeks away, and you can see what that's about to be as far as the women's war games match. Um, they got some. They got some books. So who there. did Charlotte join? Does she join Damage Control, or does she? Do they try and force her to be a face? Oh, I. I think Charlotte's way back is to Ronda because yep. Ronda's going to be doing open challenge Correct. after open challenge. Yep. And then Ronda's going to do one at the Rumble and it's going to be Charlotte and it's going to be a pop. Oh yeah, she's going to get a crazy pop. She She's going to get a return pop and that's going to be the image they want because they hold Charlotte up to this high level that they want her to get these types of pops in these big moments and she doesn't always get them. But they know a return pop at the Rumble to take that belt off of Ronda. Who's, it just don't work, man. It's, she's not that bad. And, and she's, she's putting more girl. effort in, so I'm giving her credit for that. But yeah, Thank you, no, Free. It, Thank it, you, Free. It, all the credit in the world. And she should have been a heel to yeah, start. That yes. was, that's the I biggest think, issue. That's, that's the, biggest the problem. Yeah. I think Vince just saw her smile, and she has a beautiful smile. And he said, you can't turn someone like that heel. And he was dead fucking wrong. He must have never watched UFC. That, woman, that woman's been a heel her entire, That's her what I'm entire saying. UFC career. She should have walked in there being a heel. And then, 
I'm not saying it would have worked, but it would have been. The bad. problem is the SmackDown, the the, the 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 women's roster on SmackDown. They're not really equipped to to be able to no. carry Ronda through a good match. I, and I no. I'm not convinced Shayna can because you know Shayna's still she's she's dope, but she doesn't have that much experience. But she's dope. No. Yo, it's E Ray, the quasi bad guy, the Diet Coke of evil, the side god of pod, and I'm here to tell y'all. Come check out my show, Binge Flicks and Chill. You never know what you're going to get, but we always talking some good shit when it comes to television and the latest movies. So we want to bring y'all in. We want to make sure you have a good time. You learn something, you laugh, you cry. You might stab a nigga or two. I don't know what you're going to get, but that shit is popping. So come check out Binge Flicks and Chill. And it's me, E-Ray, and I'm out. I agree with you on that. She now shayna has got more experience than you think. She, I think she did like five years on the Indies before she got the NXT. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, the, but I don't think she a the ring issue general. With is like, I was gonna say issue with Shayna is like, as long as her title reign was in NXT, I never saw a match of Shayna Baszler's and be like, damn, that was a great really? match. Never saw one I said like that was a bad match. But like, I think she gave validity to that yeah. title as yeah. like this is this is an actual title. For fighting sport, but I never, I never watched the Shayna Baszler match. I was like, damn, that was that was a great match. Never, I can never say one was bad. And like, she always had okay to good mic work, and like her foil was always someone who was interesting as a foil to her. Whether it had been Bliss, whether it had been Rhea Ripley, whether it had been Ember Moon, they were always interesting as a foil to her. But then like the blow off was never like, damn. She's another one whose voice doesn't fit their look, so I think she suffers from that too. Yeah. Mm, okay. I agree with that. She's, she's just, it's a, it's just, you can't really put her in a box. Like people want to, you want to put Shayna in a box of the okay, this is who she is, but she got too much going on. That's why I was shocked to hear what you just said about her being on the Indies for five years. Yeah, I didn't know she, that at all. Yeah, you would think she would have some more ring generalness about her, like as far as her in ring work. But I feel like she, like she, like you said, she's not a bad worker, but she doesn't sh- stick out to me like a Sasha or a Charlotte or a Becky or even a Bianca or a Bailey as far as that. You know that, that she's going to go in there and put in work. Like, but I also don't align her with like a Alexa Bliss or, uh, well, formerly when she was Mandy, but now Lamanda has kind of stepped up her game. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's like she has a weird like middle ground in the women's division. She ain't the, the bottom tier of talent as far as working goes, but she ain't up there with the top notch. So I think she would be a great person to hold like a women's IC title match. Oh lord. Um, Dana, Dana Brooks said recently she would love to turn the women the twenty four seven title into a women's mid card title, which I think is a phenomenal the USA idea. title. But I think the f- the Fox title. I, I think the, the first step is they would have to take that belt off of Dana Brooke to legitimize it immediately. But Shayna Baszler could be the, she could be somebody who could hold that belt for a long time. You'd be like, I mean, I, that's a that's a working woman's title. I mean, ah, it's a bad choice of words. <laughs> we understood the intent. We understood the intent. Yeah, the oldest professional. It's a work rate title. Ba ba. The penalty box is still open, sir. The penalty box is still open. Hey man, you said it. Uh, I've seen that floated out there a lot. You know, Raquel Rodriguez. She she oh, uh, she pose. said it. Big back pose. You know, e Ray uh, loves the back pose, man. I just, I'm not bought in either. I'm like, kind of like what y'all, but I think Dove's not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of we her. We just need to know where she was big. on January 6th. That's all we need to know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just hopefully her not Ambron. hanging out with, her hopefully not hanging right out next with to Chris Jericho's <laughs> wife. Exactly. I was going to say, hopefully not hanging out with anybody with the last name Jericho. Oh, uh, she was. She was with Jericho's wife. Um, well, everybody else that went to those control your narrative shows. We'll find out here yeah, as the, as things. the January six committee gets closer and closer to figuring hey, out she, what the fuck happened that day. She was sitting on an LA City Council a couple weeks ago. My Cali people. That's an inside joke for them, especially if you live in LA. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, but so what do you, what do you guys think about like a mid card women's title? Do you think that's like something they should do like immediately, or should they draw it out a little bit? It's like yes and no because like do some more call up. Yes and no because we see AEW suff- suffering from having way too many damn belts right now, and um and why? Oh, get me started <laughs> on them motherfuckers and they belts. I think what might be able to be a fix that can kind of handle that is kind of maybe have. Maybe NXT titles defended on the the big brands more, but then that, that might kind of take away from NXT um, because I don't I don't want that I would I would like to see it, but I don't want to see it. and then it's like delegitimized within like three to six months. So like I I wouldn't mind it because I don't think it's adding a belt at all if you just take away the twenty four seven title because clearly Triple H doesn't like the whole hey you five jobbers run around and chase each other thing like. It's dumb as there, hell. There's a way to do it. Put it on main event. Put it, you know, like have it defended at more house shows. Like there, you can do it in a way you can all, you can make main event more important. Like for a long time, like main event was having like the best weekly wrestling and it wasn't close. Shit. What, the a, 80s? The title you could have defended. <laughs> no, like Cedric Alexander ricochet matches. What? Google them, oh, this must have been like early 2010s or some shit. No, this was like a year ago. What? Everybody look at main event like, right, like that's like a a, a right, slap in the face. Right. Wrestlers have said like, it as right much. Be- right before Cedric joined the Hurt Business, he was having bangers at Ricochet. That's probably week after week. There's probably bangers week. on main event all the time, but we just never hear about them because it's main event. I mean, I yeah. I mean, I was only hearing about them through like the Twitter verse. Oh, go back oh. and watch them. Yeah, right after in, NXT like UK, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I never yeah. watched it. Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> never watched it in my life. Let's see. I'll wake up Saturday morning, 8 a.m., made a bit, 9 a.m., NXT UK, 10 a.m., AEW, Dark Elevation. I know, dope. I know it. Hey, I get it, man. There's only 205 Live. <laughs> NX, now NXT Level Up. <laughs> So hey, I, the Steve shows. I I was digging 205 Live a lot, especially like I came in right when um um dang he's an AEW now. I forget he got some Buddy Matthews when he had I, that that feud with uh Buddy with, um yeah um Tony Nese no Mustafa Mustafa Mustafa, Mustafa, yeah. Mustafa Ali yeah when they had them crazy street fights on on 205 Live that's what kind of got me in for a little bit. That Buddy Matthews Mustafa Ali match from the very first Australia show, that was the best match on that card. They tore it down. That's when the foreign shows were actually um, good. When they first started doing them, but they and they weren't just doing them in Saudi Arabia. Those, those were some. Yeah. Except for the main event, we'd be like two washed wrestlers, damn near killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> do, a, do a show in Australia. It's on like seven a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you're like, wait, what? I, I gotta watch wrestling before I brush my teeth. Come on, guys. What what are we doing over That's here? That's another reason I don't watch the Saudi shows. I am not watching wrestling at 9.30 in the morning, Cali time. No, no sir. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that's super different. It's asking a lot yeah, on the East that's Coast. That's trash. That's asking even more on that side of the country. Fuck that. Glad Couldn't Michigan got it. a day off this Saturday, or I would not be watching. Oh. Yeah. Uh, another podcast. Big card titles. <laughs> Um, I was, that's what I was going to bring up. I wanted to make a comment about the women's mid-card title, um, if that's possible. Um, what would you name it? Ooh. I think you got to throw, I mean, you could throw like women's IC or women's USA title. I mean, because you, you, what can you call it? Like, you don't want to do AEW, like call it the, the, the like that transatlantic Harriet Tubman <laughs> fucking Underground Railroad <laughs> Super Continental Heavyweight Champ. Like, we don't need all that. Just keep it simple. Um, women's whatever mid card title is for the men, just like they did with the women's championships. And to my point, okay, you can't introduce a new title until you make the titles you already have matter. The AKA the women's tag team championship. We got to figure out what the fuck we're doing here. We brought it back. Everybody was excited. They put it on damage control. They had a dope ass tournament for it. Now, like y'all, to to backtrack in the episode. Now we back giving it to, to people that just are put together so they can get them on TV. And technically, they we did gotta this figure twice. That out first. They did this twice technically because they initially put it on Raquel and uh, Elite. Yes, so this is the second time they done that, pulled this Bree. bullshit. You correct on that. So hopefully, 
this is just a, a moot point because I've already forgotten until you said that about Aaliyah in in uh, big back pose holding it for like a week. <laughs> back pose. Um, are, is is what other women are slated to wrestle outside of Bianca and Bailey on the the Crown Jewel show? It's just them and then yeah, the tag, tag team. Tag that's titles. it. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Well, okay. that, there's rumors that the the club is recruiting a woman to to be there against for when Rhea is out there for their six man. That's a good segue. What woman do you think that they will pick up? Because there's a couple out there. Uh, I heard Charlotte, but uh, I I do not think that's gonna happen. That doesn't make any sense. Nah, to me. she ain't a stable wrestler. Right, she, she's a lone wolf. Right. And even if it's a one-off, it still doesn't make sense to me. Like, no, I, no it's Beth just Phoenix. not. It's Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix tracks because of the Edge stuff. Has to be. And there's yeah. unfinished business. Yeah, there's unfinished business. Yeah, and Edge is making Edge is, a movie Edge right is now. Edge out shooting a TV show. Is it a, a TV show? show or is it a movie? It's a movie. I think it's it's the new Percy Jackson movie. Yes, 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 yes. Right? No, it's a show. Yeah. Disney yeah. Plus made it a show. They made it a show. Oh mm-hmm. yes, that's why I couldn't remember. Okay. It was like a movie, but it's a show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, y'all, y'all right. But regardless, he ain't he ain't home right now. So Beth ain't gotta be home either. It's so gotta be no Beth. Well, though, if it's not Beth, I'm gonna be disappointed. Gotta be Beth. Yeah. Facts. So I can like, see- who else are they gonna trot out there that Rhea Ripley isn't gonna manhandle and pin like she's been pinning, and fold people in half. Right. B A B A. Calm hey, down. Calm I need down. her to. Calm down. I need her to put me in that type of chokehold. See, see, free, get it free. It should have been me. Right, exactly. It should have been me. And I'm, and, I, and I'm sure if I showed my wife Rhea Ripley, she'd be like, I get it. You can, Go get your pen. And I've seen the date <laughs> history, so I'm like, it's not it's not impossible. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not impossible. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like KG said, oh, man, man. anything's possible. <laughs> Don't shit on our dreams, Doug. Are you, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Um, I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna chill. But no, nah, man. To, to, the mid card point though, it's it's a place for it. But I think they got some other work to do before we start introducing new titles and make this an AEW situation. So how would you make the women's tag titles important? Um, because you don't have any women's tag teams in on the main roster right now, like at all. Well, this is where you bring up. Teams that you, I feel like, are ready to come up, like a Toxic Attraction. You build tag teams in your developmental, i.e. NXT. And that's right. how this division becomes. It's not a, it's not a, I'm not saying this is going to be fixed overnight. I'm not saying It's not that, a quick fix. No, it, it's not. And it shouldn't. Because your point, Dub, there's, unless we're slapping teams together, there's nobody to really put there that's a real tag team. So let's use some of this underneath talent in NXT and make them a tag team. Um, Because I'm sure we're going to get into it here in a little bit, but um, Casey and Caden, that was a slap together tag team, but now they they look great. I sell it. It works now. Exactly. I I buy them as a tag team. And, B.A., I was Um, actually going to kind of go with that and say, if you are going to slap a team together, let them stay together for a while. Yeah. What the fuck else they going to do? So they can sell us on them being a team. Correct. Because if you ain't going after the women's title, what are you doing? Right. So you might as well <laughs> get your girl together and become a tag team. Ride that shit out. Boom. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, the problem was they like they had a tag team in the Iconics and they let them go. They, mm-hmm. they let Tegan Knox know, go. Granted, she was just she just kept getting hurt. Because Tegan and Dakota, that's team kick right there. And that's a whole ass tag team of two people who are best friends. What's her wizard mm-hmm. really that shiny though? <laughs> so I re- remember seeing it in matches thinking that same thing because to me the hurricane always had the best shiny wizard and I don't know if her shining wizard was better than the hurricane I just love that nah. name so, yeah <laughs> hold on the, the shiniest wizard Lady Kane it was she Tegan Knotts gets it I hope I hope she comes back I really do uh, speaking of comebacks so Triple H just kind of has this thing that like to me it's the one negative knock on him is that he just wants all his guys back and he's not building all of them back. That re-debut for Emma, that crowd was so quiet. I heard my, I heard myself talking in that arena through my own TV. Like yeah, I'm bad. like, and I get it. Emma was huge at NXT. Emma had a great run on the Indies when she was gone. 
but her main roster runs amounted to a lot of less than nothing. Build them back up. Build them back up, please. You could, please. You could argue. Same thing. Same thing with Candace. You could argue even Marie had more of an impactful um, main roster run than uh, Emma. In all honesty, it's not even an argument. She absolutely did because she got over. She got over and she made people hate her and made people love Dewdrop. I really hope they give her Piper Niven her name back. Um, yeah, but I yeah, would. like he did the same thing with Candace. Um, even the Johnny reintroduction. Do that somewhere where an NXT crowd has been. Like, do that somewhere you've had a takeover. Do it next time you come to Orlando. Fuck, do it in Cleveland. Yeah, like, I was that, just here. Like, that was so ago. shocking. That's... I think that's what made it so shocking. I'm like, he came back in Toronto? And I know Toronto's yeah. a big WWE market. Like, they have, they, it, it traditionally is, but still. To your point, it felt really random. But they hadn't been there in like so right. Many it felt years. really random. Takeover hadn't been mm-hmm. there in a long time, and he had been gone. So, and you got to remember how many kids are in the audience. Like kids five to nine, they were between one and like about four years old last time Johnny was there. And to be right. honest, Johnny like, wrestling is like the darling of like a lot of neckbeards. So I don't think he was really marketed yeah. to, to kids like. No. Exactly. Like he he's an us guy. Like us diehards who was watching NXT, watched him come in as a guy that would bring in week to week and just become arguably the greatest NXT superstar of all time. But you gotta bring him some bring him back somewhere that matters to that NXT core yeah. market. And they know what their core markets are. They have metrics out of this world. I don't I think that's just like, that's, that's just my one drawback on trips. And that's gonna be i'm be and, and i'll give trips this trips he's not like vince where he's just gonna put his head down and plow through whatever without caring what's destroyed in the process because he wants to do what he wants to do trips will learn from his mistakes trips will listen to other people and the number one thing is trips is here to do business period so if he realizes like okay maybe bringing all my boys back and girls back ain't the best thing for business because now these people are coming back. I can't pour into them as much as I can anymore. And he'll figure it out from there. Um, I think that what trips, and this may be a little controversial, um, we expect too much of his reign because it was so good. It was so different when he took over from what we was used to seeing. And when you eat shit for so long and you finally see something that's not shit, you get excited. Ooh, this can of tuna is delicious. <laughs> exactly. Beats the hell out of that poop sandwich I've been eating for the last 25 <laughs> years since the Attitude Era ended. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why um, I think that we just expect this shit to just keep going, going. Trips can't miss. Trips can't miss. He's human at the end of the day, and he's still trying to figure this he's shit out. He's had some too. misses. Yeah. And you gotta, I mean, you gotta but I'm, that. I'm all for him bringing everybody back, but... Do it in a way that like makes sense for each person. Right, find a role. Correct. Like the Dexter Loomis return, that was done brilliantly. Yes. The the Bray Wyatt stuff, BA, I know you hate it, but it was done brilliantly. Um yeah. even the LA even flipping Max Dupree back to LA Knight was done brilliantly. Yeah. Yes. You get to see him getting fed up <laughs> and then Yeah. Yeah. And now our guy's back. But That's in, a, in like, a funny way, a you way could to do it. you could compare Triple H to Tony Khan in that way. Like I'm bringing guys, mm. I like bringing these guys back because I personally like them and I personally am invested in them. But you're not always taking into account how the crowd's going to respond to them and if it fits in a story mm, a good in, a, in a storyline type of way. So I think they're very comparable in that. But yeah, I think to your point, I think Triple H he's quick to he I think he'll be quick to pull the hook if it's not working. Yeah, he he's afraid. He's not afraid to admit his faults and right. try to make something work. Just to say, like, I, I this is what I want to do. So it's happening because I'm I'm me. That's that's the Vince way. But yeah, completely agree with that. Tony Khan take this. Yeah, but the the Tony Khan thing, like, he brings guys in, but then like expects you to know about them <laughs> because you watched thirty five years of Ring of Honor. You watched Wrestle Kingdom seven when they brought Shibata in. I was like. Who the fuck is this guy? Why Why is Excalibur losing his mind? I was about to say, you, ne- like, you don't have to ever that- worry about who's who because Excalibur is going to tell you very, very fast. So don't you worry. Literally and figuratively, yeah, that like, man speaks a million words a minute. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, at least when, like, when Trips is bringing guys in, it's guys that we know because we watch them do this. 
Like, they're going to start bringing, like, new indie talent back in. But Trips is going to introduce them to this audience. Not just put them right in front of you. Like, hey, you should know who this is. I'm, the only person they've ever done that with is AJ Styles. Arguably one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Even Shinsuke Nakamura, when they brought him in, it was a slow build. They gave him an introduction over at Titantron. He had his first match with Sammy. And they built him up. Because even though, probably the greatest Japanese wrestler of all time. We didn't know who the fuck he was. I had no clue who Shinsuke Nakamura was outside of a guy that Brock Lesnar beat once in Japan. What up, y'all? It's your boy Smiles, a.k.a. Hip Hop Adam Schefter, a.k.a. Le Josh James, a.k.a. for all the ladies, the chocolate sauce bandit. You already know what it is. Tune into an audible ruckus every week. And don't forget to check out my two shows at Shot vs. Smiles and Music Impulse on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, whatever. Tune in. It's your boy Smiles and I'm out. That's all I knew about it. So, like, that's my that's my thing with Tony's. He brings people in expecting you to have read 35 books of Game of Thrones backstory on them already <laughs> and just be excited because they're there. Like, I want to, like, if I could sit Tony down, I would look him dead in the eyes like, not everybody's Will Ospreay. Not everybody is Jay White in the Bullet Club. You got to remember, you're trying to reach a larger audience here. I know you, the neck beers are going to be your bread and butter for a long time, but to get where you want to get to and to keep, you know, HBO Discovery coming back to you, giving you money, you're going to need to reach some other people. Deep. And the first, I'll, don't me wrong, the first step is to convince them to take the Big Bang off as your lead-in show. <laughs> the second step <laughs> is to do some of the opposite things of what the fuck you've been doing. That ain't happening, Doug, because Big Bang is the OG which, cash Which cow. part? The, and, and the Big Bang not leading off to that. And I'm getting really weary about TNT, about WB Discovery. You'll move Dynamite when it's hockey, but you're going to have it go directly up against the NBA premiere? Hmm. My That's Koofy is on. Though. My Koofy is on for that. Yeah. My mm, Koofy is on yeah, for that. that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't, I don't know what you thought. <laughs> Dr. Umar Free over here. <laughs> Can't get out the Dasta. <laughs> <laughs> you like, wait, you thought they was going to do ratings against this? <laughs> right. <laughs> Buddy. Body. But that's, I'm, that's I'm, 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 I feel like inside the NBA would outrate AEW if they went head to head. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Because people that don't even watch basketball just like to watch them dudes shoot the shit. Yeah. Like older people love 100%. them for dudes. Yes. And they will take that any day over a bunch of Steves wrestling and <laughs> doing Bret Hart tribute matches. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that much. That Bret Hart tribute match pisses off BA. I so love much. Bret. Uh, I love Brett too, man. Shit, man. I'm a no. I'm, I'm a making fun of that guy. because that it got kind of pathetic towards the end. I'm, I'm glad they kind of moved away from that, especially for Brett to not come to AEW <laughs> to re up with WWE. You did all that, and he re up. They, they did so much, so much. You had the Brett man. Like, Didn't he unveil nah, the yeah, title when they first? Yeah, he unveiled the, the title. title. They did yep. the whole Owen Hart tribute thing, which literally led to nothing. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that I forgot about the whole Owen Hart tribute term. All it did was make people Adam hate Cole Britt Baker won. even more. Yes. It's, yeah. It should have been Riho. Uh, or not Riho, uh, Ruby. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what? I'm yeah, like, not Riho. never have anybody Ooh. heard anybody like cheer for I know Rio. she waited by the phone. Yeah, for, she she waited by the phone for that trip boys call. <laughs> you know she is. <laughs> she might have already got it, man. She letting that nose heal up. She about to punch Britt in the right. face so she can get fired. That as soon as she heal up. Somebody needs to. Is that what is that what Andrade is trying to do too? Just trying to get fired? I, I, I literally ahead. feel like that's what he's doing. We ain't heard from Andrade oh, since that whole Sammy thing, since he smacked the shit out of Sammy. He is he's radio silent. Because nobody's questioning it because so, of Sammy. Like, say, okay, yeah, Sammy, everyone wants to slap oh, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most slap. Well, Andrade face told him, you're you going to fuck around and find out. And then Sammy fucked around and he found out. Hardest way. I became an, an even bigger Andrade fan that day. I said, oh, Andrade keeps that same energy? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Hey, man, that man's livelihood Love is at stake. He got all that energy right now, man. He is not he happy. He said, hey, you can't talk shit about me on the internet without getting slapped in the face? Love it. I can't wait till these. I, I understand these dudes understand NDAs that man so run much, out. I don't know no Spanish. I can't wait till these dudes NDAs run out and they can really talk about the sell pitches they was getting from Tony 
and then what happened when they actually got there when did they realize that this is more bullshit than where they originally came from i gotta know all those things those Somebody podcast runs are gonna be fun oh my god oh, dude so AEW was Cody. laughing it up when they were going there and talk shit on wwe when it's the other way around now Woo. Mm-hmm. Woo. oh yeah because because you saw a hint of it when punk had his little interview before the scrum <laughs> No, the scrum after the scrum. He was like, I'm hurt, I'm old, I'm tired, and I work for fucking children. I'm like, you said that next to your boss? <laughs> Fuck. Eating a, yeah, a, a yeah. muffin. <laughs> yep. And drinking a spin drift. Eating a muffin. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was killing that spin drift. Yes, he was. That Shout out to Punk in the spin drifts, man. <laughs> yes, yes. Great choice. I loved it. Great non-alcoholic beverage choice. You're going to not drink. That's oh, a good man. drink. But... Uh, <laughs> Um, but yes, how do we get to how do we get to shit on AEW? I was gonna say, look at us not talking about AEW. Yeah, we weren't supposed to talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm a fan, that's the funny thing. (laughs) Shit is like a lightning. It was just so bad last night, and I get frustrated. I think the thing is, like, because they like they went out when WWE was on all their cuffs and they grabbed a lot of my favorite guys, I want them to be better. Yes, yeah, I like if it was like if it was just like. Moxley, Jericho, Hager fucking up every week. I, I wouldn't care that much. I wouldn't care that much. But once you went out and got Joan, Andrade, and you got the Lucha Bros, you got Adam Cole over there. All right. Now you have my attention. Do better. Uh, that's, I don't Bro, know. Bro, they single handedly killed Undisputed Era. Think about that. That company destroyed oh. that whole. What they, I don't think they could ever come back together. Any of that's because Bobby Fish just. I'm he, about to say Bobby Fish got a lot to do with that too. Yeah, Bobby Fish got a lot to do with that too. Though. Bobby Fish pulled a Scooby Doo and ripped off the mask like it was Bobby Fish the whole time, and I would have got away with it if it wasn't for those goddamn social media posts. No, <laughs> right? You think you think niggas are checking for you? For you? Right. Bobby Fish is trying Absolutely. to make put himself over so hard, dude. When that that whole thing happened, but that's that's like damn, Bobby. You you wouldn't have got over like this thirty years ago when you were thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get into WrestleMania three and shit. Like, come on, man. <laughs> um, you know it's bad that's when the, I bring that audiences. Up to, when impact yeah. audiences are clowning you, you know you down bad. Oh yes, exactly. Right. That's like like sketches turning down Kanye, man. It's the same type of shit. Like <laughs> Wow. Kanye keep coming Damn. up on this show, man. He has nothing to do with wrestling. Damn. Uh, Can we talk about how BA just called Impact Sketchers? I mean <laughs> I mean whew. I don't think he's wrong. I mean They don't even get a Reebok, a Puma, they get Skechers. I mean, like they I'm not about to start bashing on another wrestling company because um, they didn't do nothing to deserve it. AEW pisses me off to y'all point while I brought up the Undisputed Era. They have so many toys to play with that are dope toys and they just don't know what to do with them and they just end up botching the shit, man. That's that's what kills yeah, me about that company. They could put on last time you saw Miro bangers. On I haven't they, seen Miro in like months. They overbook everything. That's what I'm saying. It's too much and, talent. Moxie and MJF was fine. The build was fine how it is. But now you want to bring the firm into it and then have them both turn. And you know MJF doesn't want to be a face. Even if the crowd started cheering, he doesn't want to be a face. But you're going to try and force it on him. And it's getting to the point where that main event might flop no matter what happens. Because you're overbooking I think you're right, now. Free. Because all our worst fears are happening. Like, every week he becomes more and more of a face. They do more and more face stuff to make people feel bad for him. Like, I'm just like, nah, dog. It's, you about to ruin your best chip. Like, I don't even think he's capable of wrestling a I, face style at this point. Is it weird mm-hmm. that I kind of yes. want to watch? I want to watch it more now that Freeze told me he's probably going to flop, and I'm more interested to see that than I am the actual, like, main event itself. Well, you just want to see a car crash. That's all it is. I was going to say, that's, that's the car crash yeah. mentality. <laughs> yep. You, you just, just want to see it. See. See what it looked like? Move on to the next thing. What did Alfred say? I just want to watch the world burn. I just... Oh, that's Joker. I, want to see I hope Joker those rumors of MJF burn. already no, signed... No, Alfred in. said it about Joker. Ah, I hope, yes. I hope those rumors of MJF signing an extension aren't true because it's, it's going to get real... I don't think he really did. I, I don't think he really did. I think he got a couple more dollars in his pocket, but I don't think... He's a smart dude at the yeah. end of the day. and He knows the bargaining chip he holds 
by keep on like talking this 2024 shit. Um, MJF knows that he can walk out of that door in 2024 and be main eventing WrestleMania within two years against Braun Breaker. <laughs> Man, he's how fuck will we be? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? He's not he's wrong. wrong at all. He's literally the only AEW like original that's definitely more of a WWE style. Like literally the only one. Facts. Yes, yes, free. Absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. It, yeah. It's funny you bring up Bronx. I've already tell I already told E Ray this. Like, I'm a Bron guy. I know he gets oh, a lot of hate on here, but I'm a Bron. <laughs> I am a Bron Breaker <laughs> fan. And I, I know I know he's not <laughs> the most technically gifted, but the guy, I don't know. He just got the look. He embraces his lineage. He kind of understands the, what WWE wants out of its wrestlers, especially when this makes me so happy. <laughs> we finally got. I was about to say we finally you got guys a, some balance. contrast. You needed balance. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we got some pushback. So, free. Let me ask you yes. this: because on NXT Wednesday, they ended the tag title match. Um, obviously, pretty deadly retained because there was no way they were putting all of those belts on those two guys. And then Vaughn Wagner comes out, makes his presence known, and just hits Breaker with a big boot. How do you feel about Vaughn Wagner versus Braun Breaker? Or would you rather see someone else challenge Mr. Breaker for the NXT title at deadline? And see, this is the this is the the drawback to being a fan of big meaty men slapping meat. Because there's only a handful, <laughs> there's only a handful of men that can slap meat. Because the other <laughs> meaty men are awful. For every for every Undertaker, there's a great colleague. Am I, you feel me? Yes, so, or, or or an almost, yes. Yes, for every Braun Strowman, there's an almost, and that's giving Braun Strowman too much credit, honestly. Um, yes, so, so true. Because, honestly, you know who I was in on when they were running with him for a little bit? I was in on Ryback. When they were first doing the Feed Me More, and he was running through people, and he Oh, was, he was over. Yeah, he was 100% I was in over. on it. He was I over. was in on it. And then it all fell apart. The moment he said Ryback rules, I was like, all right. No, when they put him, when he was like vibrating and breathing all hard, looking at CM Punk, I'm like, I think I'm off this guy. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. He killed his own, like, he killed his own momentum. 100%. But I, and then they sacrificed, and then they sacrificed him to John Cena, and it was over. Like I appreciate, you know I always appreciate the, the the guys that have the work rate, but it's just something about a dude that got power moves and that power move skill set. Like I want to watch that guy. I, I can't be so mad like, at that way of thinking about things. We we don't like necessarily hate Braun, but I'm just one of those guys. I think he needed more time in the in the lab before they catapulted him to this. I'm with you. I didn't I'm I'm like the hot shot in because like when you put him up against like more seasoned guys, you're like, no, that guy should be your champion. Like to me, putting him in a match with Santos was the worst thing they could have ever done for him. Cause I was like, oh, Santos is that guy. Yes. And it was clear to me by far. And then they put him in the match with Melo, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, Melo's that guy. Like it, that that was my problem with him. Like I think I know for a fact that he's not going to lose that belt until he gets called up. And then from there, it's just five WrestleMania straight. Right, because the reason they're keeping the belt on him is because I think they agree with you. He's not ready. So they're trying to kind of have a kick he needed too. We want this guy to be an attraction, but we know he's not ready. So let's keep him down here. Let's keep him champion. And let's let him get experience through these high-profile matches with guys that have a better work rate than him. But he can learn something from them too. Because I know people love J.D. McDonough. I just see him like he's a pale dude with a big-ass head. But these last couple of matches he had with Braun Strowman, he kind of earned some respect for me because I saw him and I looked at him like a Bobby Fish and a Kyle O'Reilly. And I know, you know, people love those guys. I don't see it with Kyle O'Reilly. That's just me. I see it in a tag team with Undisputed Era, but him by himself, I am not trying to watch that man wrestle. I'm sorry. It's hard to it's hard yeah. to buy. I, right, I agree right, with that. Right. The stuff he was doing AEW. Yeah, like, yeah. Red Dragon's one of the best tag teams I've ever watched, but those guys by themselves, I was like, this ain't doing it for me. I don't but know. Dra- An Undisputed Era is one of my all-time favorite oh, things. Yes, definitely a same. top stable of all time. But someone like Dragunov, yeah. I thought he was actually going to win that triple threat. Um, I did too. I yeah, did I thought too. he was going to win. And I could, he I should be your cool NXT champion. Right. He's, got, he's the worker, there, there's man. Just, there's something about Dragunov, man. Like, he just... He, damn- he just has, like, this reckless abandon, but he doesn't have, like, the cruiser style. So he's doing it 
like a kamikaze pilot. On, Literally, his you finisher know who he is, is he dives at you head first. <laughs> so you, yeah. you know who he is? He's a modern day Randy Savage. I'm talking like Macho Man from the A, not the '90s and Wolf Pack and all that shit. The technician Macho him. Man. Thank you mm-hmm. from the '80s. I see Champ Macho Man. Um, that's who I think Dragonoff is, just with a more modern take, but. Even more so like Macho Man, dude don't get his respect, just like Mach didn't. But that was for other reasons, brother. But the man literally <laughs> died. The man literally died in the ring with Walter. They literally died together in that ring in that match. They, I, <laughs> I swear they took years off their lives in that match. I ain't never seen Chess look yeah, so like great. <laughs> yes, bro. Like I don't I don't cringe a lot watching wrestling, but that match got to the end when I was cringing. I'm like, yo, all right, come on guys, come on. Stop slapping each other, right, please. Man. But I'm gonna spin, yeah. I'm gonna spin it back to kind of answer your question. Von Wagner, no, he is terrible. He is. Thank awful. you. I was about to say, freeze. Just, I thought so when they were doing when they were doing NXT cuts, I was I was ninety percent sure he was one of the cuts. He, Too he, big. I'd rather see the dude they did cut the Bodie. I'd rather see Bodie fight Von he Wagner than 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 Von than. I mean, rather see Bodie fight Braun than Von Wagner. He's awful. Even though he had my favorite spot in the ladder match when he damn near killed Wesley, that was dope. But oh, when, he threw, when he threw him into the parking lot, but he also him? almost oh, he killed a fan too, not knowing. I was how to about move to say, you talking about that poor black lady that had to like do a limbo to not get hit in the face. So he Von giveth, Von taketh away. Von giveth and Von taketh. Oh, but man, answer, for you said. A, you said a lot to unpack there, man. <laughs> um, I don't think we've ever had a pro Brian Breaker take on this show, even though we don't hate the guy. Like, to Dub's point, he's just had this nepotism push when Vince was there. He has. He and has, I think if Trips sure. was in the building, that wouldn't have happened in the fashion in which it did. They probably would have let Champa kind of lead that along a little more, and they just immediately ripped it off of him. Um weird yeah um but i get your attraction to big meaty men bumping (laughs) meaty whatevers and all that shit i get it um that's what pro wrestling is at the end of the day that's the nucleus and foundation of this shit physiques matter dudes doing shit they shouldn't be doing um but like like i feel like as you said like like he was he's there to work with guys to, to have a better work rate than him Explain this Von Wagner match to me. Because I'm like, is no, he ready I'm to with, I am 100% match? with you guys. I think, <laughs> I don't know if Shawn Michaels was just like, you know, Von maybe right reminds me of Diesel a little bit. I don't know what it is. But um, <laughs> maybe that eye needs to straighten so, out a little bit to kind of, to see, to see it right. But because my answer, <laughs> I feel like, and I think you guys talked about this before, I feel like it's Melo's time. I feel like yes. the, the next dude in line should have been Carmelo. Uh, I think he's going I, up though. To talk about yeah, yeah, probably, I think Melo's going probably. up. Unfortunately, the thing, I, the thing that's funny about Carmelo though, he's one of those wrestlers that's so dope, but has an awful finisher. I hate his finisher. I can't stand it. He'll, thank you. I yeah. Can't stand it. Thank you. I hate it I so much. It. It's not the best. I hate it. Why the black so man much. always got to get the axe kick? I don't care if it's off the top rope. It's still an axe kick. Like, come on. Right. Right, <laughs> man. Like, I hate it so much. And there's so many things that guy can do in the ring. I'm like, come on. We got to come up with something else, guy. I don't care. Just give him yeah. a splash. John Cena splash. was doing that move. A splash would be dope. I would rather see him just do a splash something. than than do that that top rope axe kick. Right. Anything. Right. Yeah. Anything. I mean, well, shit. Shawn Michaels didn't have a super kick out the gate. That's like, true. He was doing some, like, some back body drop or something at his fucking finisher when he started com- coming into his own. So maybe they'll let him do some cool shit in the main roster. Who knows? But yeah, his his finisher Man. is mid at best for sure. Ba, who would you rather see Braun Breaker defending his title against at Deadline? Brett Michaels. No, I don't know, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, who? Let's a, see. A rock of Love action. Exactly. Where's E Ray at? Um, serious answer to that question. Um, I think Apollo. Apollo would make more sense mm-hmm. because of his he's a he's a worker in comparison to Vine. Um way more of a worker. Um Ilya Dragunov in a singles match? Nah, huh? we've huh? we've seen huh? it. Even though it's a triple threat. I would say honestly, as I think about what's happening in NXT, 
Ooh, I don't know if he's ready for it, but I would like to see a Grayson Waller like uh, feud. That's what I'm here for. I would love to see. Oh, man. Cause that's your heel that's gonna make him matter. That's gonna make Brian matter. Uh, Grayson Waller is the Miz 2.0. Thank you, VA. That's not a that's that, that's, pre- that's not a bad thing. I see it. I think I predicted it on this pod a few episodes ago that I think Grayson Waller is gonna be the guy to take that belt off of Braun Breaker since I think they're calling up Melo. Because no one else on this roster is over the way Grayson is. No one. And he's over in a way. That it works and he has this work rate that he can work the chicken shit heel style. But if you trap him in there the way there's like, Braun's going to just trap him in the center of the ring and make him work, Grayson Waller can work. What up, y'all? It's your boy Smiles, a.k.a. Hip Hop Adam Schefter, a.k.a. LaJosh James, a.k.a. for all the ladies, the chocolate sauce bandit. You already know what it is. Tune into an audible ruckus every week and don't forget to check out my two shows at shot versus smiles and music impulse on all streaming platforms spotify apple soundcloud amazon music whatever tune in it's your boy smiles and i'm out he can go at a very high level amen and truthfully i would um what i would do is i would like i wouldn't have grace to win it clean i would have some interference happen oh absolutely to keep him over and I would have the interference happen with someone who like whoever's gonna like be the guy to give Braun his send off match whether it be should it, truthfully it could be Von Wagner Von Wagner's gonna be there for a lot longer <laughs> if Von Wagner's the one to cost him the he title he ain't never touching the main but not a, but not a Hell no. not aligning himself with Jackson Waller wrestler for NXT um but that's the thing like if you wanna establish Von Wagner as a main event teller after you you have him cost Braun the title and then him be the guy to beat Braun clean in the middle of that ring to send Braun packing. Well, we got to see more out of Vine for that to be sold to us yeah, as, I, as that, viewers. That, that's not, no, that's not, I can't believe that right now. That's not believable to me right now. Correct. Yeah, um, we got to see some matches out of Von Wagner to sell that. But something shit. I am with Grayson Waller. We need more dastardly heels. We need more heels winning, cheating to win. So I agree. Yeah, that's so, how you get over baby faces. Yes. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. I don't think we hate Braun as much if we have him going against real life shit heels. I think the biggest right. shit heel he's gone over going against is Joe Gacy. Like as far as like somebody that was doing yeah. the most fucked up shit to him. And I think people hate yeah. Joe Gacy more than they hate Braun Breaker. So people wanted Braun to win. <laughs> yes, I think you're right on that. <laughs> Nobody was buying Joe Gacy beating him just because of just the stature of their bodies and stuff like that. Like people hate Joe Gacy. And mean, the funny the thing IWC. is I liked his initial NXT 2.0 gimmick. I get why they pivoted. Cause they didn't want to be in the news because that whole safe space. <laughs> so annoying progressive, even though it, it probably would get him over in Florida where NXT is. Yeah. They were just one um, um, MSNBC article away from getting attention. They didn't want <laughs> That's a very, yeah, but like, very good take. But the the initial the initial idea was it was a great idea. It was like amazing. When they first started, it was, I was hilarious. Like, I was like, oh, this is yes. good. But then I I think I said in this pod, I said, but I don't think they're ready for the type of attention they're yeah. gonna get nah. if they do this right. Nah. So they pivoted, but then they're I think they're pivot again, bringing in Ava Rain. Like I watched that interview on on Wednesday. I was like, I kind of like where they're going back to. And is it just so me? Like, or is she already good on the mic? Oh she's yeah, great. she's great on the mic. She's great. I was like, yo, she's like, she's like years. Behind and her mannerisms, the way like I can see the crazy in her eye, like she's selling it well. She's committed. Yeah. She's committed. Oh, uh, she, she's money. I mean, granted, we know who her father is. Arguably the greatest mic man to ever pick up a microphone. Correct. But. Damn, she's right, good. but she and it's not Quickly. always assumed that it's going to be handed down. You know, for every yep. Ted DiBiase, right. there's Ted, there's Ted DiBiase Jr. <laughs> mm, man, shame to the DiBiase name right. that Ted Jr. is. For every for every <laughs> Kurt Henning, there's a Curtis Axel. So, <laughs> oh man. And the thing about like when she was speaking in like this promo, they actually felt like they knew each other, like they were actually friends. I'm like. They, this feels like an actual stable. This doesn't feel like a storyline that was pitched to people. Like, if you told me, like, yeah, 
Joe and Jagger and Ava hang out on the weekends and go go kart. And I'm like, oh, that's right. And they might. She's been there think... long enough, you know. She's been there like five yeah. years. Yeah, now. sitting in the back watching. And I was gonna say, do y'all think the schism is going more towards like a a direction of um oh the thought just left my mind. Damn, it was I was gonna say leave me go past me because I was I was, was going to say the schism reminds me of something I've seen before reminds you of a girl you used to know no okay all right Usher. not at all <laughs> I think if they can if they can find that thing. happy medium where it's not supernatural but it's just creep, uh, creepy enough to make you uncomfortable I think they have something mm-hmm. yes yeah Yes. Oh, like, that's what I was going to say. It can be supernatural, but it can't be creep. It can be creepy. But go ahead, B. Yeah. I think they're going more like straight edge society. That with yeah, this, I can see vibes. That. I can see that. Yeah. The it's not. It's like somewhere in the middle of like straight edge society yes. and what the original gimmick yes. was. Correct. Yes. Yeah. They they leaning into that whole like you gotta you want to be happy you want to love trees and all that shit come come hang out with the schism we appreciate right. the environment and outsiders are welcome if you've been shunned by everywhere else in society you won't be shunned here right yeah yep 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 so but no but the, but the original gimmick was so good it was, hey, it was so fucking good they just they just better I'm be like, lucky man. they got rid of it before america became obsessed with serial killers again because of jeffrey dahmer so yes oh yeah that would have been another <laughs> thing yeah that would have been another thing yeah. mm-hmm. that's what i'm saying like you was right on that like they pivoted at the perfect time because everybody's eyes went on these like super duper like real life bio shows, bio documentaries that came out on these serial killers. They would have just been like, well, what, what the hell I, is the schism? I was speaking more to the people that would look at that and be like, oh, you're making fun of me because, you know, I'm progressive and I'm, you know, mm, you know I got, I still got, got the Obama you. sticker on, on, uh, I got the Bernie sticker. I'm a Bernie bro. I got the Bernie sticker on the yeah. back of my car. Again. I see what you're saying. You know, now. I drive a Prius. <laughs> I donate to Black Lives <laughs> Matter, all that stuff, you know? Those Man, people would have I been pissed you. when they found out about that. Yeah, you want to get canceled. Yep, and then, right. And then the Republicans like, were like, see see how ridiculous this is? See, it's on yeah. wrestling. See how ridiculous this is? Like, yeah. Now, they, they pivoted at the right time. But, all right, that, that, that's enough NXT for right now, guys. Because <laughs> we got some blood money to talk about. Vince and Trips and the WWE stockholders are getting their 45th installment of Saudi Blood Money this Saturday. Guys, we got some matches on the card. Let's do some picks. Let's do it. Are we ready? Let's start it off with the match that none of us are looking forward to. Women's Tag Team Match. Asuka and Bliss versus Damage Control. Who are we picking, guys? Uh, I, Free, I will start I'm with I'm with you. BA. I think, um, I think Damage Control is getting it back, which just makes Monday make less sense than it already does. But I, I'm, I'll I'm say why as we go through the card, because there's another match that makes me think they're going to win. Okay. B.A.? Uh, damage control, because why the fuck do Asuka and Alexa Bliss need them belts? I, I hope that they win. Okay. So, yes, that's, that's who I think. I, you're both wrong. I'm kidding. No, it's damage control all the way. It's got to be. All right, here we go. And they're going to do it in a cheating Next. way. Sorry. Next up, the undisputed tag team titles, the Usos versus the Brawling Brutes. Apparently, Jay and Jimmy can travel to Saudi even though Jimmy got like five DUIs. <laughs> <laughs> Who we picking here? They got a hell of a lawyer, I'm sure. Man, I'm, uh, I'm going with the Usos. I think they got an advocate. They got an advocate and a wise I, man. Come I think on, there'll man. be some slight shenanigans because of Sami Zayn, but the Usos will be able to overcome it and win. Oh, you think Sammy Shaw? Oh, out. I didn't think. Yeah, he is not going to be there. I completely yeah. forgot. Sammy I completely forgot Sammy about that. Sammy don't fuck with the yeah. blood that's, money. That's why I we ain't put... seen Kevin Owens. That's why we ain't seen Kevin Owens the last two, three weeks. They kind of have com- to let him kind of fade in the back while that he got this show built. That going. completely left my mind. Yeah, he ain't going to be there. So it'll just be a straight up match. Okay. So the Usos just went clean. Okay. All right. Agreed. So ne- next up, we got the Club versus Judgment Day. Oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I got Usos retaining it too. I don't think they're losing. Same. I I, I said it low. I said it low, but I agree with Free. They're gonna win. Yeah. I think it's for all, Usos across the board. Yeah. All right. OC versus the Judgment Day. Mm. Ba, let me start with you. I'm gonna pick the OC because they the, the whoever the female 
person is that's going to be with them is going to help them win. And then we're going to get our blow off at Survivor Series. Okay. Okay. BA, what are you thinking? Free. Oh, um. No, I'm sorry. Free. Yeah, free. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You know, I, I want to see the judgment day win. I'm actually very in- invested in the judgment day. I, I feel like they need to win really? as much as possible to be built up as like a big, obnoxious hill group. I agree with that. Yeah, um, I agree with that too. Um, but I think, yeah, depending on who the club brings in, if it's who we think, then they'll probably go over. So I'm picking the Judgment Day to win because of Rhea Ripley, and I think you get the Beth Phoenix run in after the match. Okay. And then that's, that's how that would be ideal, up, actually. That's how they set up War Games. Yeah. Yeah. Like Rhea does her thing; she power slams Luke Gallows again because that's going to pop that Saudi crowd. It can, and they definitely want to like focus on like, hey, we're doing more for women over here. We're letting women be seen doing things. <laughs> My, my only question was that is, lives. would that pop the crowd? I think maybe the younger folks in the crowd, they're still a, like, they got to come covered, you know? Yeah, so that, I think there's that's, that's what still... I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But that's, that's the next step. Like, you have one women's match, and then you have a couple more women's matches. Next up is to have a woman slam a guy. I do want to see Rhea make it I home. Do. I do want to see her make it home. <laughs> That'd be sad, bro. Same. <laughs> Same. Sad. So I'm, I'm going Judgment Day there. Next up. Is we got big meaty men bumping me. <laughs> Braun Strowman versus Omos. Now this is a poor example of my theory. That's why it's hard to like the the big muscly physique guys because sometimes you get matches like this. This match is not going to be I good. I think Omos is like way better than he was at Mania. He is, but I agree. way better. Still not good. I still don't think he's there yet. Still not yeah, good. Still not there nah. yet. Now we put him in the ring with a guy like Braun Strowman, who's just now kind of getting his footing around how his wrestling style should look. So, yeah, I agree with that. So, are you guys both picking Braun here? Uh, Yeah, but I have a feeling that the feud isn't finished because I don't think he's going to win clean. It might be like a count out or... Uh, I, th- I think that uh, MVP going to interfere and hit uh, Braun over the head with the cane and it's going to be a disqualification. Yeah, it's, it's a blow. Okay. It's going to continue, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm going Braun here as well. Um, I don't I don't see any reason for Braun to lose right now, but I do see reason for them to keep this going, and then for them to possibly turn them to into a tag team. That would be fun. We haven't had a giant tag team in a long time. I can see it. <laughs> that would question, be crazy. Question about Braun: do, do you think they looked over seeing what Warlow was doing, and then they told Braun to start using the power bomb? Yes, one thousand percent. One thousand percent, yes. Yep, yep. Because I, I think they're sending a message to Ward though, like, hey, you sick of your, sick of your executive producer, all in the video, <laughs> dancing around. Wanna come to WWE, bro. I, I think that's what they're doing. I don't have proof of it, but I think that's what they're doing. You sick of the owner they're, of your company coming Wardlow. out and talking at the end of your shows? You never see Triple exactly. H unless I'm in storyline. Because I'm Triple H. They're telling Wardlow, hey, man, you can do one moonsault a year versus the 12 you got to do to keep up with those guys in <laughs> AEW. Yeah. Come over to Death Row. <laughs> and, just, and just have crazy strongman matches against Braun Breaker at WrestleMania <laughs> for 12 years. Yep. All right. Next up, we got, which I'm not... I don't know if it's going to be the blow-off match of this feud or if this is just going to be a blood feud that goes on forever. Drew McIntyre versus Karrion Cross in a steel cage match. As we all know, cage matches are usually the blow-off to end to a feud, but I don't see how this ends considering that Cross, you know, has just targeted Drew as like, you're not the chosen one. And then Drew is just losing his mind. He's like, Cause I need to kill you essentially to get back to the title picture. Free, let me start with you. Who wins this match? I actually think Drew is going to win. I think he's going to win because I think they're realizing, like, this guy, we've screwed this guy over a couple times now. We we didn't let him win in his home country. Well, not his home country, like home area. We didn't give him the big pop at WrestleMania when we finally got fans back. And he's done nothing but be loyal to us and represent us well. We got to start doing something with him. As much as I, I like what they're doing with Karrion now, and he's got some really good momentum, I don't think a loss will hurt him. Uh, and what I could do, what, and you could be right, but I think the blow off is maybe like having a street fight on on SmackDown or something, instead of having it build even more to like a Rumble or something like that, or Survivor Series. So 
There could be a blow off, but it'll be like one of those blow offs where it's like on a on a SmackDown in a big a city. Miracle of Thirty Four. Yeah, fight. like a SmackDown <laughs> in a big city. We're gonna have this street fight in 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 uh, New in New York or whatever. They, aren't they hitting Madison Square Garden soon? I think you're right. Uh, yeah. Day after Christmas. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I I go I go Drew. Okay. Next question. B. Evan gets you in a minute. Next question. How does Drew win? Does Drew escape the cage? Or does Drew pin cross one, two, three? I think he pins him, but I hate cage matches where you have to pin them to win. I feel like the cage match, the only way you should win is to escape. Like, I'm, I'm kind of old yeah. school like that. I hate that you have to. Because why even have a cage if you if you can pin them? I, I, I can tell free watch w, old school, early 90s WCW growing up with that being said. <laughs> with those with that mindset. B.A., who, who are you picking to win this month? Um... As much as I want to be a contrarian, I can't really pick against Drew because, like, he's he, he's he's primed for something else after this, and um, so is Carrying Cross. Like, this is the only thing Carrying Cross has done since he's been back for a few months now is just go after Drew during that Roman promo. So I feel like these dudes, whoever comes out of this, is gonna be back in the fold with Roman and all that stuff when Roman decides to want to show up for SmackDowns and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I gotta pick Drew, man. I think that he's gonna get the pin. I don't see a big ass Drew McIntyre climbing out of that cage. So that's true too. That's true. Yeah, that's gonna look weird. So I can see him just Claymore kicking him and pinning him. All right, so hear me out here. I haven't booked a territory in in a while for this whole show. Actually, I'm gonna book this territory out. Drew McIntyre wins this because Cross knocks him out of the cage. Mm-hmm. And then Drew McIntyre is laying on that on that mm-hmm. ground. He's won the match, but Cross is the one standing tall. Continues to beat on Drew, and then you get that. Cross leaves, Drew wins, and then you, you're able to elevate Cross to possibly start looking towards Roman. Like, yeah, I'm coming for you now. And then Drew's kind of down on himself. Like, yeah, I won the match, but I, I, I got to beat this guy, but I... I got to get better. And then he comes across one Ludwig Kaiser and Fabian Eichner telling him he needs to get his shit together. And then he's like, I'm going to take both of you guys out. And then walks in one Walter. And this is how you get Walter Drew for that IC title somewhere around, we'll say Rumble. And Drew... Gets his moment in front of a huge crowd, winning a title, winning that title at the Rumble, and he holds it for a while. And then again, that frees Gunther to just be a monster for a while, challenge Roman. It frees him up to be a guy that challenges Cody when Cody gets that belt at Mania. That's how I would book this out. If you would, if they would just let me book the territory. What do you, what do you guys think I, of that? I fucking love that. And oh, yeah. IC title elevated. You can have your your Ivan Drago versus Rocky fight with uh oh, with man. Gunther versus Cody Rhodes. Um, oh yeah. shit! I fucking I fucking love it. Yep, yep. Boom. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. And then Drew holding the IC title, we can get Sheamus Drew seven. <laughs> I'd be mad at that. Yeah. I don't need to see that. <laughs> but it, but it's something now, like they can always go back going. to. They can always go back to that match, and then to me, like the yeah, IC title like the, is at its coolest currently. When it's like when it's not like guys who are like American like born wrestlers like going after it. I like the idea of Ray going after Gunther. Ray versus Drew sounds like an interesting match. Shinsuke versus Drew. You know what I mean? Like you bring up. You bring up all those kids from NXT UK, literally all of them, and let them all challenge Drew. I don't care. Like, there's so many things you can do with the IC title, you know, now that you have it on, like, foreign guys because they have so much foreign talent out there that they've brought in. Yeah. And there's always that nationalism in wrestling that'll make fans want to see an American wrestler take that title back. Yep. That, too. Mm-hmm. That, that That's a perfect way, like, if you want to bring somebody up or – you can turn Drew Hill with that title, and you know, you got your nice little nationalism pop, dude. I don't know, do it around SummerSlam yep. or something. Well, no, SummerSlam's in Toronto, so you couldn't do that. But anyways, next up, we got more 
Big meaty men bumping me. <laughs> we got Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley too. I'm gonna start off this one. Here for this match. I'm going Brock Lesnar. Um, since Bobby won the first one, I think Brock is gonna win the second one. I think the third one happens at Mania because I think this is gonna be a trilogy, and I think Bobby's definitely gonna win that third one at Mania because it's time to put the sunset on Brock's career. It's, it's time. It's time. I, everyone keeps saying it's part two, but isn't this technically part three? Well, Didn't part they wrestle the Survivor Series a few years ago? Like no. a title versus title? No, they've ne- they've never wrestled before that um that match at Rumble. The Royal Rumble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um What up, doe? It's your boy Big Low Gross. And I'm letting y'all know, man, y'all listening to the Inaudiverse, man. That's right. Sometime a while back, man, we converted the show from just a podcast, man, to the Inaudiverse. So we got like five shows, you know what I'm saying? We got Music Impulse with Smiles. We got Let Me Book the Territory with E-Ray. We got Binge Flicks and Chill with E-Ray. We got um, the regular show, Inaudible Ruckus, that you're probably listening to now. And then we got the Skeeters podcast. And then we got some other shows that we're working on, man. So keep rocking with us, man, and, and welcome to your experience inside of the Inaudiverse. Motherfucker. And it's funny that they're like, they're just now kind of getting to this because this is the match that they pitched to Bobby Lashley to get him to come back. And it took three years to get there. Because, <laughs> you know, Brock, Brock's got to respect you to want to do work with you. So I, I feel like he didn't respect uh, Lashley at first. It's a better question. Of did, or did he know? Like, I don't know if Brock's a guy that watches TV. I can almost guarantee you he doesn't watch the product at all. Because when they had oh, him yeah. in the Rumble come in at one, everybody that came out, he's like, who are you? The look on his face when he saw Keith <laughs> Lee, you're like, oh, he doesn't watch this product oh, at boy. all. Yeah. I mean, he don't he don't watch, but he loves taking titles off of black men, so I don't know. Oh, man. You already know, Free. So I don't know. You already know. He might have knew. Um, it was like, I need you to have something I want from you first. <laughs> Dub. I, I, <laughs> I got I to gotta bring up your comment, man. You talking about Brock Lesnar. Like, he was like a wrestler from like the the OG era of the 80s and 90s and stuff, man. He What is he, in his 40s? Mid 40s? Brock might be 45. Yeah, I think he's 45. That's, okay. So... I guess you're right, Dub, in the wrestling sense. And Brock Lesnar's been very adamant about, like, not wanting to, to do this type of shit forever. So, I guess I could see him start to tell it back. But I feel like we're not, we're like another five, six years away from that conversation. And all honestly. Right. I'm, yeah. I, the I, the I way said he wrestles sunset. right now, he could wrestle another 10 years. Yeah. I said, yeah, sunset. that's wrestling. what I'm saying. Like, the sun is going to set. It's not like dark. back nine. It's not back nine. Yeah, it's not, yeah, back nine, the of, back the nine of it. I got you. But, like, you had gotcha. for you have to have another guy like you can't because after Mania Brock's gonna go away again and then you just you just had him beat one, another one of your top guys no Bobby has to win that at Mania because if you think about it after Mania if they bring in another influx of kids those kids are 20 26 you know what I'm saying like there's another round of youth coming and what's interesting about wrestling is that this is kind of like the first time we've seen like longevity in the entire industry. You know how long the Rock's run was in WWE? It was like five years. Five years, yeah. Total Stone Cold's run. That's nice. It, felt, it felt like forever at the time. It felt like forever. Correct. At the time. Brock's first He's run never gonna go anywhere. Three years. Angles run. Three years. Like you don't you don't see longevity like in the sport like that. So. That's that's why I say like because he has his longevity, it's time to start moving the the guy the next guys up that have longevity. Like Bobby's that that next class of guys, he's getting into the point where he's like in the longevity part of his career. Brock should be closer to the closer to the end, the back nine, if you will. Especially when you consider how young those kids are in NXT right now, and how young like some of those top guys in, in the roster are right now. Rhea Ripley's like twenty three. You get what I'm saying? Tyler Bate is 22. Braun Breaker might be 26. Like, I, your, your next crop of guys is young. And if you want them to have the time, you got to clear out some space. 
and I just love how Triple H is finally seeing blood. What we all saw. This is how you properly lose Brock Lesnar. He doesn't need to be in the title picture. I don't even think Brock cared about being in the title picture. He's just like, you paying me, I'm gonna do what you want me to do because mm-hmm. you paying me really well. <laughs> so I agree with that. Yeah. So it's all about his bread. Right. 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 So to have him to have him out here and in these in these. They're valuable feuds, but they're not the primary feud. So to have him in that way, where he's still an attraction, but he's just not going for the biggest prize, is I think a way to 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 maximize the the, the twilight, like you said, of his career. Yep. And, and I agree. I think I don't see uh, Bobby winning this. I think Brock will win. Maybe there's some shenanigans that uh, keep the feud going, like you said, because I don't think it's over either. But yeah, the feud has to end with Bobby winning, or else it, it's kind of pointless. B.A. B.A. It's yeah. on you. I think um, you guys, your, your point, Dub, about the end game of this makes me believe that Bobby's going to win the, this first fight of this whole feud. This is going to go all the way through WrestleMania. Bobby won the first one. Um, no, I'm talking about since Brock came back after his Roman stuff. This this is fresh. This is a new feud as far as the feud goes. This isn't. We're not picking up from Royal Rumble. I think we, I think we are. I think Royal that's Rumble. why Brock attacked Bobby. Because if you remember going in the Rumble, how heated those like those promos were against each other, right? Okay. And then Bobby gets that and W, the that and then Bobby can kind of hold that up. Like, yeah, Rumble. I beat Brock Lesnar. Brock's like, the, the fuck you did. You had some help, right? And then so correct. I think that's why Brock gets his get back here. I can't argue with that then, with that being said, but um, I think that, well, you know what? Oh, not final on this decision. It'll be Brock. And the reason being, where we at? We in Saudi. Saudi. Saudis <laughs> like to see the people they know win. Yeah. That's why they still ask for undertaking Hulk Hogan if they're going to be wrestling at these <laughs> things every time they show up there. Are we gonna, they're not coming through the curtains, guys. Hey, Mr. H, are we going to uh, get, get a Triple H match? No, guys, I'm retired. What about Ric Flair? Right. No, right. guys, it's not nope. happening. Ric Flair would he's, say he's yes. not allowed to come here. Oh, yet. Rick would say yes. I can wrestle heartbeat. again? Yeah. Undertaker <laughs> That's why he's his, not there. Yeah, Undertaker would drag his busted ass hip. Oh, they want me to wrestle again? I guess the Taker's <laughs> got to ride again. He, he'd look at Michelle like, honey, got to go. <laughs> One last you ride, one honey. Ride. One last you, you ride. Fucking, <laughs> she's gonna him like you better fucking not. <laughs> right, exactly. These default. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up our lawyer. She's gonna be my lawyer. <laughs> say, take Taker would look at go Michelle, and Michelle would call Giselle. Like, hey, we gotta talk. Mm. Right. Who's your guy again? Is he on retainer? <laughs> How much is he again? Yeah, we got a problem. All right, and then very similar to Tom. And then of course, what else we got? Oh, I'm sorry. We got Bianca Belair versus Bailey for the Raw Women's Titles. The next matchup, gentlemen, free. I feel like this is going to connect to an earlier match. So, what, what, what yes. are you thinking? What, what are we thinking? Kind of building off what I said about the tag titles. I think Bailey goes over. Probably Ooh. some shenanigans because it's a Falls Count Anywhere match. Or no, last women standing. Last women standing match. That's right. So probably some shenanigans similar to the, the one we saw at SummerSlam with Brock and Roman. Damage control will get involved, and uh, they're going to be all standing with the women's gold. Um, now, I it, it would be cool to see Bailey as the champion, especially that kind of solidifies why she came back, because um, it's a waste to not have her in that role. But I actually want to see Rhea be the one to take the belt off Bianca. I think I think Rhea has really established herself as a beast in that women's division. They're they're having her more attached to Judgment Day, so she's not really interacting with other women like that. Mm-hmm. But I think they could easily sell her as being the one to take it off Bianca. But I'm cool with Bailey winning it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not mad yeah. at Bailey winning it. I would. I'm predicting Bailey wins it as well. Um, more so, even like outside of the ring, I think after Survivor Series, Bianca's going to get some well deserved time off. Especially since, you know, Montez is injured too and the holidays are coming up and she's been a workhorse for a while. Um, so I'm going Bailey. And she's better through. chasing. She's better chasing than having. She's, she is way, like she does have, she does need to have some reins and have some long reins because of who she is and like how she works and her style. But yeah, she's a much better chaser. I do agree there. Um, I think Bailey wins and I think Bailey wins and I think that gets us closer to Sasha coming back. I'm going to completely disagree with both of you gentlemen. 
Um, I think it'll be Bianca. And it'll be because Becky helps out when Damage Control comes in and tries to help out Bailey. And then we get our Survivor Series Women's War Games match. It'll have to be... I could see it being Bianca, Becky, and the current champions, which is, I think, the reason why they put these titles on them to get them involved in the Survivor Series. And then you have Damage Control... And then maybe a fourth person randomly getting thrown in there. This is where you could possibly get your Charlotte spot. She just wrestling in a war games match with with damage control girls because she's a, she's a heel in this situation, right? Um, and then after it's all done, she goes to SmackDown and goes and does a Ronda thing to book out the territory. So hmm. I think that's how this all plays out. I think Becky helps Bianca and she retains. Hmm. Oh, and there, there's another thing I've thought about that can have a factor. Um, Nikki Cross can, still could be a factor in this match. I don't think they, mm. they changed their whole gimmick back. There's your fourth member of one-off. damage control. Yeah. There's I your was fourth thinking member. That too. Nikki Cross could be a reason why Bailey either Bailey wins or Bianca wins. I feel like she might be a factor. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Yep. Here we go. I'm going to book it out. I'm going to book it out. So... <laughs> First of all, B.A., you're wrong. Bailey's winning this match. Um, but Becky does come back. But here, and they start to build the war games, and Damage Control can't find a fourth because everybody fucking hates her. So, <laughs> Bailey offers Nikki a title shot if she helps Damage Control win Survivor Series. And Crazy Nikki is like, yeah, I, I kind of want that thing back. So all right, I won't I won't continue whooping y'all ass for this one week for Survivor Series. Boom, and there you go. That's how you that's how you book that. And that works because be the bad. backstage segments will be hilarious with Bailey trying to find a, a fort. Yep, they would be hilarious. <laughs> yep, yeah. Bailey's fucking gold. Would be a great way to bring Billy K back. Billy K just pops in, hands Bailey your resume and headshot. <laughs> huh? Huh? Callbacks. Callbacks. <laughs> I mean, if, if if Trips wants to keep his spree of just bringing back people just because, that's a perfect just because right there. See? They should just say the least. They should just let me book the territory. And all right, gentlemen. The main event. Logan Paul, social media megastar versus... The guy who's having one of the most unbelievable runs I've ever watched in my 30 years of watching this sport, the tribal chief himself, Roman Reigns, for the undisputed title. I want you to give me the winner and give me how it ends. B.A., I'm going to start with you, sir. All right. Um, It has to be Roman. I don't see Logan Paul winning overseas. Um don't see it. I think he's a bigger deal over here than he is internationally. Um, and I see Roman winning clean. He don't need the Usos to beat or anybody to beat Logan Paul. No no shots against him. He's, he's held his own in the ring and a couple times we've seen him. But, I mean, I don't see him getting lucky. This ain't boxing. He can't sneak a lucky punch in there to try to knock out Roman. That's, that's not happening. Um... I see Roman winning clean, honestly, Doug. Okay, BA. I'm not just gonna be free, free. I'm gonna get this right. I, I, it definitely has to be Roman. You don't build him up over this two going on three year reign. It feels like to have him lose to someone who's still not really a wrestler. But BA, yep. uh, I read that the Saudi Prince is actually a really big fan of Logan Paul, and that's why he's in the match. I read, the I read that too. Really? Yeah. That's a, mm-hmm. Well, that's different then. Right. But I still, I, you're you're absolutely right though. He's not Roman is not winning. I mean Roman is not losing this match. It's just a matter of how he's going to win. And I think he nah. wins. He wins sort of heelish, but not with help. I think it's something like, kind of like what happened to the to uh, the demon Finn Balor. Not that ridiculous though. But maybe <laughs> Logan goes to the top rope and and Roman pushes him and he you know falls on the turnbuckle. Something like that. Something where he yeah. takes a little too much time or tries something a little too high risk, and it does it, and Roman takes advantage, and that's how he gets to win, probably by guillotine choke. To make uh, Logan look strong, too, maybe Logan doesn't get pinned. He just gets choked out, and we continue the reign. 
So yeah, so I'm going I'm going Roman wins by guillotine choke as well. I think and I think you get three spots here. I think you get a spot of so I think a referee gets knocked out at some point and Logan knocks Roman out. Pins him, realize the referee isn't there. And I go, oh my God. And then knocks out Solo, knocks out both Usos. And then by the time he's done knocking out all the Usos, he gets a spear and then Logan, and then Roman picks him up and just chokes the ever living life out of him. And that's how you get your victory from Roman Reigns. So that way the Saudi Prince gets what he wants to see. Logan Paul doing cool shit and throwing punches and knocking people out. But you carry on to Roman Reigns towards WrestleMania in the most unbelievable title run we've ever seen. I like that, but I don't like that because it makes Logan look a little too strong. But because, like, we talked about the Prince wants to see him, I could definitely see that happening. That's but, the only reason I would book it that way because the Prince wants to see right. him. Like, if, the right, Prince, right, if this right. was, like, mm-hmm. if this was anywhere else, oh, Roman just beats him clean with a spear after a good 10-minute match, and we're done. Yeah. It's 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 a Brock-like squash of Kofi if, if this is in the States. <laughs> I would love that. It's I would like love to have that. That would be hilarious to me. I would love to yes. see that. <laughs> oh, the internet would break. Big fact. If Roman squashed Logan Paul. Oh, yeah. Internet would just break. But, yeah. Yeah, but... You can't pick against the tribal, the tribal chief, man. He's just, he's, he ain't losing overseas. Speaking of the tribal chief, did you guys see the guy. promo he cut on Raw as he was leaving the ring, talking to the camera? <laughs> was ready to <laughs> run Such, through it's a better wall. Better and better. So, Such good shit. Oh man. Such good shit. He said, "Why are you talking Roman about him knocking TV, me out? Man. I'm tired of being humble. I'm the guy. This my." I was like, "Oh shit, Mike! I need to go to the gym right now." He, He's just on a whole other level. <laughs> and it's just like something just clicked one day. Like he was just sitting there while he was at home and he was like, This is how we gonna do it. And he's just been on a run ever since. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. I'll start it with that sociopath shit. And taking it from there. Yeah, like And I think he knew his leverage with Vince, like, hey, you know you're the you, you I who I am who you wanted. And I'm only coming back if we do it this way and my way. And he uses leverage and yeah, he he he's been going crazy ever since. So so yep, good. so yep. good. He I think it started with Heyman, honestly. He's gotten so yeah. much better at like at talking like away from a microphone and just like being loud and being arrogant. Like the stuff he did with John Cena, the stuff he did with Seth oh, as man. he was choking him out when the ref was like, let him go, and Rome was like, I tried to let it go. He won't let me <laughs> let it go. I was like, <laughs> like this is so good. This is so good. <laughs> Like, Everything with Jay Uso. Oh man, yeah. That, that look up he did <laughs> yep. on Friday when Jay was like, "I don't give a damn what the Tribal Chiefs." And Roman looked out. I was yeah. like, "I f- I felt like I was about to get a whoop." And I was like, yeah, "Right, that's... yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that look. I've I've seen it before in my nightmares. Yeah, he, <laughs> him, him and Jay especially have mastered facial features and they're acting yes. to the point where, again, for you've been listening. Having WrestleMania in Hollywood is the worst idea they're ever going to have. They about to kiss a lot of people goodbye. I mean, they get one they get one look at Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, out of there. One look, one look at Roman standing next to Rock, <laughs> gone. Well, you know, Roman said them that, that he already he already got his foot out there in Hollywood. He just waiting yeah, for the right he opportunity. Got the Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm saying for like, the right opportunity. But all those executives yep. who are now cool with Dwayne are gonna just be at WrestleMania and watch that match and see that guy, and they'd be like, "Yeah, no, how much is Jason Momoa for a movie?" Yeah, no, we found it. We found his replacement. We're good. Shit, yep. Sasha gonna come back to just leave again. Exactly. Damn, might take Naomi Sa- with her. Sasha come back. She taking Bianca with her. She taking Charlotte with her. If if Braun Cody Breaker's even there, got that. he might be gone. Cody, Cody even got that '90s Dolph Lundgren look, you know. Yes, he does. When they see Cody come out to that pyro and they see how the fans react to him and that emotion he elicits, they might be like, "Yo, we gotta get him the fuck up out of here too." Now, question. <laughs> I I do not feel Rock and Roman needs to be for a title. I think Roman should drop it before Mania. No, absolutely not. So, and audience, we know you guys have heard this before, but let me let me book it out for free the way I booked it out. BA likes this as well. 
So the way you do it is Seth wins that title from Roman at Mania. And I think this is where Sammy gets kicked out because he ends up costing Roman that belt. And then you still keep the bloodline together because Jay Uso's like, see, I fucking told you. And then they, that's how they kick Sammy out. But Seth gets that belt. Cody wins the Rumble. You get Cody. Oh, Cody's a hundred percent. If he's healthy, he's a hundred percent. You get Cody Seth three yep. at it'll be three or four at Mania, and then Cody four. and then Cody wins that belt at Mania, um, and then at whatever pay per view it is before say before Mania, Roman's beating the shit out of Sammy, and as he's looking like he's getting ready to actually kill Sammy, if you smile, you're like, oh shit, we're, we're really getting it, we're really getting it. And then from there, that's the only way you, yeah, you don't like you don't need work the rock you don't need eight there. weeks of build between Rock and Roman. It it takes two. It the build's been there. Yeah, it doesn't even take two weeks. It just takes a stare down, and you're like, I can yeah. see it happening at Elimination Chamber because you can get you can get one international appearance of the Rock, have it be at Boom. Elimination because it's in Montreal. Boom. And then you 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 you're on the road to WrestleMania from there. Yep. Nope. There it is. Yep. My only thing it's is, I, I like Seth winning. I feel like it's the only person that. I could see having a match with 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 Cody at Mania, but do we really want to see Seth? Rose, I mean, Seth put over Cody four times. Yes. The I think the narrative speaks to that happening. Like if they get in the ring again because of what the last three matches have been, and it's not like Seth's like getting squashed. Like That's true. these are matches where it could it, be either way. Like little shit that makes Cody that puts Cody over. He's um, the Rock to to Cody Stone Cold because it took the Rock. Because mm-hmm. we forget the Rock and Stone Cold had matches that weren't on Mania's, but Austin won too. Mm-hmm. So true, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like when Rock was IC champ and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, IC yeah. champ. Uh, the infamous, uh, I think it was Backlash when The Rock had the camcorder and he got stunned yes. through the announcement. Well, that was yes. Backlash. That was yeah. funny. Yep. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I think like, yeah, Cody can go over Seth that fourth time. And I think Seth's cool with it because again, he's getting whatever that huge payday is to walk into WrestleMania as champion. So, yeah, And Seth's old school. He, he don't care about wins and losses. I think, no, part of it does because he's mentioned how he feels he's in Roman shadow. Mm-hmm. But he's a traditionalist. He understands that, you know, the ring work is what matters the most. Yeah. And putting on a and show I, And I think is Seth's a guy, the most. if you pitch him a good enough story, he'd be like, yeah, that works. That, that's how we should do it. But the only wrench in this plan is I feel like they're slowly turning him face again. If we want, if from what we saw on Raw on Monday, yeah, he got the blonde hair yeah. back. It was a heel versus heel match with uh, with uh, theory. theory. So one of them got to be faced because WWE rarely, if ever, does heel versus heel matches. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at some point, I Seth's going to just go back face just naturally, organically. But I think, like, I think the rivalry with Cody, he, he could even be faced by then. But the yeah, rivalry, I, was about, I was just about to say, I could buy a face yeah, versus face. The Cody rivalry Seth with Cody match. is just built on so much, like, animosity between like how you know Seth attacked him after the Hell in a Cell match how Seth is one of um, Dusty's kids but Cody is Dusty's kid like there, there's so much there that they can build off of that even if Seth is face at the time you can still build it and have something epic come out of it I can't I definitely agree and, yeah. then, and then Seth yeah. can Seth can go on and just have another face run for as long as it lasts. I mean, we, we can all agree it's never gone great, but we also have never seen this version of Seth Rollins as, at the peak of his powers either as a face either. So it's um, anything's possible with Seth Rollins. Just off yeah, of possibilities, the best... 39 is shaping up to be looking like it might be one of the best manias ever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hope free if yeah. they do it the right way. I mean, the right. good thing is Trips gets it yeah. more than Vince ever did. And he's gonna feel that pressure. He, of a show. He's gonna feel that pressure to be like, I have to deliver. It's, it's my first, it's his first one. Absolutely, yeah. mm-hmm. first one. So I agree with you. I think the biggest thing out of these different booking of the territories, um, it's a realistic way to get both of these belts off of Roman to get these back on each brand versus how it's been since WrestleMania this yeah, year. Yeah, because the other thing um, I said, Free, and not to cut you off there, B.A., but I said, like, if you put good. both belts on Cody, Cody's the type of guy where he can come out on Monday and cut a promo and be like, 
you know, SmackDown deserves to have its own title. I'm on Monday Night Raw. He leaves one of those belts in the middle of that ring. And then somebody, you know, wins that belt in a match. And then that's whoever Austin Theory cashes in on. Because I don't I don't think you leave the week after Mania without Austin Theory having a title, if I'm being 100% honest. Two things to respond to that, because I kind of want to show you how I would book it. But number one, I've heard rumors that they're, they're positioning Theory to be the first to carry the briefcase for the full calendar year. I can see that. Yeah. But honestly, I like the idea of him cashing on, on cashing in on Braun Breaker. I like the idea of him going. I know it kind of devalues the briefcase a little bit, but I like that idea of him cashing in on Braun Breaker and being an NXT champ. So I think he would do great in NXT. I would argue that it doesn't. I think it has a dimension. Yeah, I don't to think it, it devalues yeah. the briefcase. I think it elevates the NXT title. That too. Mm-hmm. That, that, that yeah. too. It has a different dimension to the briefcase. Because if but that's the case, if he can yeah. cash it in on the NXT title, I mean, he could have cashed it in on the IC or US title. That automatically means that the NXT title is more important than the IC and US title. It elevates the NXT title to me. Which it should be. Which it 100% should yeah, be. So. Even though those titles have more history. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. um, I like that here's idea how too. I would book the separating the belts. Because, you know, Roman's on his God run. But he's not afraid to, to, to win in a heel way by, you know, by cheating. So, say Survivor Series or Elimination Chamber... He's in a in a in a title match, whether it's in the chamber or just one on one. He's wrestling somebody, say it's Seth, and Seth beats him. But and maybe like the the the, the Raw or the SmackDown before that event, they have a contract sign. Seth beats him. The next day, Raw or SmackDown, whatever, Roman comes out. He has Paul Heyman with him. Paul Heyman has him pull the contract, and you'd be like, you didn't read the fine print. The only title mm-hmm. that was on the line was the WWE title. So Roman is still your universal champion. That's how I would book it, separating those belts, because it get it gets Roman over as a heel more, and you're still protecting the person that you had beat Roman. It, it's good. Hey. I I just hate the whole paperwork thing. Like, but that's some wrestling did, shit. But, you know? I, I know. But this I know regime it though has shown that that's very capable of it. They did it on the most important belt in NXT. That, why can't they do it here? Yeah, I mean, they did it That's on Dynamite this week. They're like, whoever wins this triple threat gets the contract to face against their dream opponent in Atlantic City. I'm like, so fucking stupid. But I'm like, it's a wrestling Yeah, that was thing. dumb. But yeah, I, I can see that as well. I'm not, I won't be mad at that. I I love yeah, when that, like that's how I would do it. I love when like Heyman kind of like Jewishes it up and just like plays <laughs> to all those tropes. Hey, be careful! Oh, be no, careful, no, hey, Doug. No, yeah, be, be careful. He, he plays, they just suspended Kyrie. Be careful. He Penalty box, the, Doug. He plays up the tropes of how he's <laughs> Jewish. He's like because even when was at Raw, he's talking about how he was at the synagogue and he was talking to his doctor who knows another doctor who knows another doctor uh, and he said you know how we could foots and I'm like this is so good man. this is so good this is so Jerry Seinfeld ass he said I'm, what did he say that one time I'm from Brooklyn I'll whoop your ass I'm like you won't but I believe that I, that, I felt that but you won't you won't do right. it but you I felt me you on won't the mic. but I believe <laughs> that you believe it you're, right your stature tells me different but you sold it so. <laughs> well done man. job well done and ladies and gentlemen, that has been oh, another man. great, phenomenal, if you will, episode of Let Me Book the Territory. I want to thank our guest host, Free, for popping in here, covering for the homie E-Ray. want to thank B.A. for finally getting out of a Wakandan jail. Oh. <laughs> Who says I'm out, allegedly, according to y'all? Hey, but that's like I said, the story. underwater Mexicans bailed him out. The underwater <laughs> Mexicans broke him out. <laughs> yeah, we... Hey, man. They, we got to get you out of here before it's lights I out. I, I totally get it. <laughs> All right, guys. If you guys are for looking sure. for me on Twitter and on Instagram, I am at ADUB1220. Every Tuesday, we got new episodes of Embrace the Turn Up with me and my homie John. If you're looking for me there, that's on all your podcast platforms. Be it. Hit the people with your socials that don't exist. Y'all already know, man. I'm, I'm, y'all not going to find me anywhere, but you'll find this podcast page on Twitter at Let Me Book Pod. Um, making some of the best takes controversial sometimes. Who knows? Um, I can tell you I will not be live tweeting during this Saturday afternoon show because B.A. has a whole ass family and <laughs> things going on this weekend. And my kids are crazy. 
<laughs> um, so I will tweet when I'm able to watch it. Probably Saturday night. It's gonna be a chill night on Saturday, so you'll see some tweets out of me once I'm able to catch up with the rest of the IWC. Um, but yeah, outside of that, that's that's what BA's got going on, and uh, also free. Feel free to come back. No pun intended. Oh man, anytime that you y'all like. Y'all stuck sir. with me now, y'all. Y'all oh, absolutely. Y'all hey man, up. I'm here for hey, it. Hey, I hey. love I love the energy, man. Whenever y'all need it. me, I'm here. Absolutely free. Drop I'm, your I'm, a, hot, I'm a hot tag. I'm a hot tag away. <laughs> yes, hey man, hey. I like that. Tag it up, brother. I like that. <laughs> uh, uh, y'all can find me on, on Twitter at uh, despicable underscore free. Um, and on Instagram at Free Luminati. So y'all can hit me up there, interact with your boy. We talk wrestling. I need more people to talk wrestling with on social media. So yeah, let's do it. Boom. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And watch Saudi Blood Money 12. Interact with us. Feel, you know, or tweet, tweet us, even though we probably we might not be watching live. Tweet us anyway. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah, man. Tell us up about your picks. Um, you know. Good. Everybody go out. Wish E-Ray a happy belated birthday. And until next time, guys, remember that wrestling is everything and everything is wrestling. And when you see us out, just hit us with that too sweet. And we are out. Peace. Yes.